the food you eat is going to send you to hell. Or will it? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to Soteriology, the sporadically uploaded show where I sew and talk about things. <laughs> Today I want to discuss something that's very important to Mormonism, the religion I used to be a part of, and that is called the Word of Wisdom. So the Word of Wisdom is a set of instructions about what believing members are to eat, not eat, and other substances that they are to avoid. Most non-members know it as the set of guidelines that says it's sinful for members to drink coffee and tea. The Word of Wisdom can be found in one of the auxiliary texts to the Book of Mormon called the Doctrine and Covenants, also referred to by members as the DNC, uh, not to be confused with dilation and curatage. Not that I've made that mistake before. The Mormon Church website claims that the Word of Wisdom is a set of commandments from God as revealed through Joseph Smith. These guidelines include fruits and wholesome herbs, including vegetables, should be used with prudence and thanksgiving. The flesh of beasts and the fowls of the air are to be used sparingly. Grains are the staff of life. It instructs that alcohol, tobacco, strong drinks, and hot drinks are not for the body or the belly. The church interprets hot drinks to mean coffee and tea, but they are totally fine with hot chocolate, herbal teas, and soups. When I was growing up, I was told that coffee and tea are prohibited due to their caffeine content, but also that decaffeinated coffee and tea were still bad, and also that caffeinated soda and energy drinks are a-okay. So which is it? Is it the caffeine content that's the issue? Are members just supposed to obey for the sake of obeying? Some say yes. It seems the church has never been able to really nail down why hot drinks are so bad and should be avoided. I've also come across a letter from 1965 signed by the church presidency stating that decaffeinated coffee was okay for members to drink and that it should not be reason to deny them a temple recommend. I'll include that letter at the end of the video so you can pause and read it at your leisure. There have also been rumors that Joseph Smith outlawed coffee and tea as revelations from God to spurn his wife Emma because she enjoyed those things, but I haven't seen any solid proof that this is based in reality. It is also rumored that Joseph Smith enjoyed tobacco and alcohol, so why would he go and restrict those substances as well? It doesn't really make sense, um, but then again we are talking about the LDS Church. Something else that I find interesting is that church members focus on avoiding coffee, tea, tobacco, and alcohol, but completely ignore the eat meat sparingly part. Many members, especially in Utah, are avid hunters and enjoy a good barbecue. Not saying that there are no vegans or vegetarians in the church, but you can pry the Mormon's venison from their cold, dead hands. Make it make sense. That's my sentiment towards the church as a whole. Make it make sense, because so much of it doesn't, and it requires Olympic levels of mental gymnastics to justify and rationalize away. That critical thinking just gets you every time. Anyway, here's that letter I promised you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Click like. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and leave me a comment on your way out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.